Welcome to NASCAR Cup Series practice on FS1 presented by Toyota. Yeah, it's family day at Daytona. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that family tree has no branches. I'll tell you. However, NASCAR's Cup drivers fresh off the duel at Daytona last night that set the field for the 500 have work to do. This 50 minute practice session based on the forecast. Don't make me look at it. This could be final practice for the Daytona 500 Kevin and I think you need to plan for that based upon what you had last night. We saw a wild race in both duels last night and I think if you obviously had an accident you had to change it go to your backup car. If you were slow you need to find some speed if you didn't handle well you need to make a car handle well. But that's what they're going to try to accomplish today and I think everybody's on a little bit of a different agenda and oh don't tear up another car. All right let's dive into it a little bit. Yes absolutely. There's some guys in different automobiles today yeah. after last night Fords. I actually saw the Fords thought coming into you know previewing Daytona that the Fords going to show up with the upper hand still the same upper hand they've had in the last two or three years. I didn't necessarily see that last night. These Toyotas. Holy cow. No show Jones on on uh, qualifying night. All of a sudden the duels we put them all out there in a the pack and here they come. Yeah they were def definitely the class of the field last night as we went through both duels and they came from the back to the front and they had the best strategy. They did everything well last night. Well of course the winners only led one lap in both races but still a win is a win and get you set up and ready for Sunday. And that's what we will do in this 50 minute practice session. Ooh, fan got a souvenir there. There that's is one of those guys in a different car. That's what right. That is. You used to give a lot of those souvenirs, didn't you? <laughs> there is another <laughs> practice schedule uh, session scheduled for 1030 tomorrow morning. So this is not scheduled to be final practice, but we'll see what we get when they open the track for practice when we come back to Daytona. Welcome back to Speed Weeks presented by Advent Health. And a fan gets a souvenir out in Lake Lloyd along the back straightaway. Look like dinner to me. Well, last night, watch the yellow number 12 of Ryan Blaney here. Third car on the inside gets tagged and has a really hard hit with the wall here that ends up in that car in flames and bail uh, Blaney bailing out. So how is Ryan Blaney today, Jamie Little? Well, there were a lot of wrecked race cars, five backups, and about 10 others had a lot of repairs to fix today. But we just saw Blaney roll out. I talked to the team. Ryan feels good today, said he's just a little bit sore. He was very frustrated after all that happened. But I talked to Jonathan Hassler, his crew chief, and he said, the backup car, it's good to go. And he credited the safety innovations the last couple of years on this current car for Ryan being able to climb back in and drive right now. So their plan is to go out with their teammates, run in the draft, but he's going to run in the back, make sure everything is good, systems check as we call it, and then he'll work his way through the pack and feel that car out. So that's all good news for Ryan Blaney, Mike. Thank you, Jamie. There's that in-car view slowed down and what a tremendous hit. Yeah, and we just appreciate our guys slowing that down for everybody to see because <clears throat> with this particular car and the way that it wrecks, it just happens so fast. And when you slow it down, you really see how violent it is for the drivers. And this wreck goes on and on for Ryan Blaney. I think he gets hit five times. He's got flames coming through the door. So it was a violent, violent impact. Yeah, and that bright light on Ryan Blaney, that wasn't a spotlight. Those were the flames coming out from under hood. Just so appreciative. You know, we talk about how hard a hit that was. You gotta gotta give praise to the, the safety aspect of that. That car took a shot. You can't hit any harder. Well NASCAR's just put a ton of time into this car and it's built for wrecks like that. It's built for those really, really heavy impacts and, and they've they've done a great job in trying to help with the, the smaller hits and, and all the things that are around your head. So uh, everybody working together has made this this car better and better safety wise. Alex Bowman and his Hendrick Chevrolet teammates Kyle Larson Chase Elliott William Byron no surprise here Kevin teammates out there following each other 
Well, you want to control the environment as much as you can during practice. And we talk about the manufacturers and everything that they do during the race. Well, practice is going to go the same way. This this time, this is just with the team guys. And they have a specific agenda before they go out on the racetrack as to what happened last night in the duels. And that really dictates what you work on today. Am I working on my car pulling up? Am I working on uh, closing off the grill to get a little more, uh, the blocker plate to get a little more speed? Am I handling bad? Whatever that issue is, that's what you're going to work on today in a controlled environment, not tear up the car. Well, if I'm talking about Hendrick Motorsports, which is what we're following along right here, I'm going to tell you they they had speed. I liked the speed that I saw in Larson's car. Chase Hill, it was the same way. William Byron, he was up there. These guys have the speed, and all of a sudden now they have the handling. Yeah. We have definitely seen the, the speed from, from the last few years. So uh, Stuart Haas right here on Chase Briscoe, I mean, they, these guys have had speed. And what you, uh, I'm like you, I didn't see what, what we had in the past from the speed out of these guys last night. So I would assume that they're probably working on trying to make either make their cars pull up better or more speed in the car in general. The number four had problems last night, would not crank, would not fire after his stop. What'd you find out? Well, I talked to Rodney Childers this morning, and, and he told me that they had a, a little bit of an electrical issue. They got that fixed. They made some parts, got the parts here, uh, and, and put those parts on the car. We'll have the parts on the car for the Daytona 500. Looks like they're going to pull up and join the force. I think it was RFK I saw. Won't be probably off the floor. They're going to catch them. Yeah, and once all these cars connect and, the, and the, these two groups get together with the, with the Ford camp, what you'll see is you'll see nobody try to really pass each other, and then you'll see the leader kind of drop to the back and, and go from the back of the pack, and, and it'll cycle through till everybody gets an opportunity to see what their car is like in each position in the line because you're very responsible for every position in the line in, in a different way, whether it's partial throttle, whether it's um, you know full throttle, whether it's move the line, block the line if you're the leader. So you have a different responsibility for every position on the racetrack. And your car will react different in each one of those. That's right. That's why you want to be in them. Don't like this way. Come back in, make an adjustment. Like you said, weather, guys, weather coming. This could be the last opportunity you have to be on this racetrack. It's not ideal. It's not the big pack, but this is the best you're going to get. Now, there's David Reagan in the number 60. He is also going to practice uh, Chris Busher's car. Chris went home, and here is why. His wife, Emma, had their second child, uh, a little boy, and Chris went home for the birth. Of course, he'll be back here for Sunday. Congratulations to yeah, the Bushers. Congratulations, and I apologize for I, mispronouncing Chris Busher's name last night. I get I get excited up here, I've learned. So well, um, you didn't call him Christopher like I did. You did? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, this is the penultimate practice for the Daytona 500, weather permitting for tomorrow's run. We'll be right back. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Series practice on FS1 presented by Toyota. Now there's Daniel Suarez. Look who he's running by on his way to his car. Hey, uh, Ricky, not uh, kind of wide, but Ricky Bobby and Cal Naughton Jr. there. Well, it's been a uh, while since the movie. Well, they just finished Xfinity Series practice and Suarez is double dipping, so he has to run between garages to get from one car to the other. See these Toyotas right here. You heard us talk about at the top of the show, Kevin, at Denny Hamlin's car. Very impressive. Three time champion of the Daytona 500. Yeah, and that's that's usually pretty hard to do unless the unless the leader's checking up and and it doesn't sound like the leader's checking up or look like the leader's checking up. So being able to push like that is pretty impressive. Today's Toyota driver profile is Denny Hamlin. Fourth on the board right now. Here's a look inside his FedEx Toyota. Love this shot. You can see them looking in the mirror. So important what's in your mirror. Four top fives in the last six five hundreds. And coming off a win in the clash. Yeah, and you saw Denny Hammond pull up and hit the back of, of Eric Jones's car right there. And and really that's that's what they were good at last night. It seemed like they could push and shove, but they also had a lot of speed uh, with with everything, every car that they raced. So they're all at the top of the board right here again and and able to push and shove and do all the things that they need to do and run fast. So um, they're impressive. So and you're saying that's a good combination. <laughs> 
but checking every, all the boxes. But everybody, you, you will have a meeting before practice and go out there, and, and everybody's going to talk about it amongst the crew chiefs most likely and who have talked to the drivers to be able to say, hey, we want to do this, this, and this, and, and let's do it. You see Joey Logano pull up. He's had his time at the front. Now he's going to cycle to the back of this pack and start to accomplish what um, whatever the whole agenda is for for this group and sometimes you're just the extra car out there running to make sure that the other guys can get through the checklist of things that they want to accomplish during practice. Now, I will say you know we talked about the Fords and, and weren't quite as impressive as they were in qualifying. They were really fast and in particular Joey Logano and that McDowell. I liked what I saw out of their cars still had the speed that they showed in qualifying in the duels. The question is can the rest of the Ford camp follow suit. Jamie. I was walking through the garage. There's a lot of teams that have been working very hard since 9 a.m. But I walked by the 22 and Paul Wolf, the crew chief, is just standing there staring at that beautiful yellow race car. And he said, we're good. We're going to go out and just feel the car out in dirty air. We were really happy with the drivability, really happy with the speed. And obviously, they had great speed, guys. They got Roger Penske's first ever pole for the Daytona 500. Yeah, I think I just backs up, you know, kind of what I was alluding to there. I, I, they were fast. I want to know if the rest of them can figure out what they had, right? Is there, do they have something in those two cars that the rest of them didn't? Well, this is a great time to, to go through all that stuff. As, as we saw in qualifying, there's a lot of a lot of different theories in how the car should ride. And, and for race trim, you want it to ride smoother. But today, if you thought your car handled really well and rode really smooth in, in, in the race last night, then you're going to be a little more aggressive on the springs and the shocks and the ride and what you can tolerate from the driver's standpoint until it disrupts the handling of the car. So what you're talking about there is the balance, right? You, you can put a little more speed in it, but it's going to come at the expense of some handling. Yeah, and really, the expense that it comes from here is just the ride quality and the way that the car just rides down the road. It's going to be in order to run really fast like we saw in qualifying. It's going to have to be really rigid and in order to be really rigid um, it's going to bounce around and it's going to be darting. It's going to be hard to push and, and just finding that balance between all those different things that you want in the car to make it run fast and handle. 38 minutes to go in this practice session. We are hopeful this this is not final practice, but there is that possibility. Denny Hamlin at the top of the chart. Joey Logano getting a little bump from Michael McDowell. Tonight, a nice surprise, an unexpected double header in Daytona. First, the world's fastest truckers take center stage at 7.30 Eastern on FS1. Then, because of the forecast, the ARCA 200 scheduled for tomorrow has been moved up, and it will air right after the truck race tonight, also on FS1. All right. A lot of racing. On board with Chase Briscoe, and he falls into that category of probably need to make your car run a little faster based upon how, how he worked last night. You see the gap between the car in front of him. He's trying to see how far he can get back and still pull back up to the pack, I would assume. Well, if my math's right, with your retirement last year and Eric Almirola stepping away from racing full time, Briscoe is now the senior driver at Stuart Haas. Well, and that's that's what they need. They need somebody to, to step up, you know, with uh, to, to be the, the leader of the team and do the things that that you're supposed to do in the competition meetings and everything that comes with that. Now this is a new hot rod. That was Blaney, wasn't it? That was Blaney. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, different I, helmet. I, as we went away there, I, I kind of thought I, I don't know if it was when we went out from the shot or it sounded like he lifted out of the throttle and I was. Well, you looked at me like I had two heads, so I was like, well, that was Blaney, wasn't it? Well, that's not and, abnormal. And you, <laughs> and you make a good point. When, uh, in that crash last night, one of the first thing NASCAR does is confiscate your helmet and take it for testing. How long That's before you get it back? First thing I noticed is it was a different helmet. I, I don't maybe a, a shot like that you might not get it back. There you go. Might not want it back. Yeah, and a shot like that last night, we would get rid of the Hans strap. We would get rid we'll of the Hans. The Hans uh, itself, we, yeah. we would most likely switch the helmet just because you just don't want to take any chances. And they're there's they're, they're big hits. And that was a massive hit last night for for Ryan Blaney. I'm glad to see him back out in the car. Kudos to the team as well. It's not 
it's always a lot of work to get the backup car prepared. You can bring some backup cars down here. Uh, not every team has a backup car with this with this next gen car. So team did a great job getting it back out there. And these guys are so detailed at what they do that I wouldn't think that they had any worries about putting that car on the track. But you never want to go to your backup car at Daytona. No, but again, I, we talked about it last night with Kyle Busch, you know, tearing his car up. I was thinking, I watched this race back, and the one thing I remember is he tore that car up and, and uh, the duels comes back and almost won the race. He was literally leading the 500 lap, right? Went into overtime, but uh, nonetheless, he had a fast hot rod and a chance to win. There are the drivers in backup cars after last night's incidents. See Austin Sendrick pull up. Uh, he had his time at the front. Now we'll see uh, what Harrison Burton can do at the front of that pack. And, and a lot of what, what they're working on, too, is who's the fastest car leading the pack? Who can who can tow us around the racetrack the fastest? And that one's obviously going to go faster with Ryan Blaney pushing it. <laughs> Good push. uh, but once they get singled out and, and they can see who which car pulls up to the lead, whoever's leading at that particular moment to see maybe there's one car or the other that I pull up better to. Maybe there's one car uh, that that pushes me better. Whatever that scenario is, they want to know it now. And, and now they're just playing with all the all the details of everything that goes into seeing who who needs to line up where and, and what what the best case scenario is for the for the team or the manufacturer. Hear a lot of throttle, a lot of throttle with with uh, Ryan Blaney. And when these packs are small like this, the energy is just not there from the bigger packs that you have. You see him breathing out of the throttle a little bit there, trying to get everybody behind him to to get a little bit closer so that he can keep that pack tightened up. Coming up on halfway in this Friday afternoon practice session. Glad to have you with us. Welcome back to Daytona 500 practice. One more round set for tomorrow, 1030 a.m. Manufacturers working together, trying to sort things out and get ready for the 500. Here's Ross Chastain uh, going to be headed for pit road this time. Yeah, and I, I love this shot. And the one, the first thing I noticed in Ross's car is his head bouncing around a lot more compared to what he is in qualifying. But he's coming to pit road right here and watch his left foot start to modulate that that brake pedal as he goes over the bumps and make sure he doesn't lock those tires up but that's a great shot you're doing a lot with your feet here I know you can't really see it when we were just watching the cars go around the racetrack but there is a lot going on in the cockpit of that car also with every downshift you saw him just blip the throttle a little bit with that right foot ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam. It's matching those RPMs that way it doesn't wheel hop getting down to pit road speed pretty key here in the five and I remember Ross had a Pit road speeding penalty last night, too fast exiting. As we watched the Chevrolets at work, the Toyotas, Toyotas were fastest, eight of them all in a row. Then a group of six Fords, and now a group of half a dozen Chevrolets. Difference between the fastest lap for each of those groups is about about a second. For Toyota's fastest, Ford's second, Chevy's third. Well, it's pretty clear as we've as we've noted a few times the the Toyotas are they're the, they're the speediest cars in the field. They have the most speed for sure. Um, that's why they're done. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why they're in the garage. That's right. We saw them practice a few times coming to pit road and they put them in the garage and said we're good. You good. Yeah, yep. you good. Yep. Park it. They're working on pushing each other if you want to get away from it. They've been working on it for the last couple laps. Yeah, and from a driver's standpoint, you hear the spotter telling him that they're working on pushing. You you want to know the timing of everything and, and how your car pushes and when you need to push. If you didn't feel comfortable with it last night, or maybe maybe Joey Logano wasn't comfortable being pushed and he needs to be pushed better and they've made some changes to his car. So look at the fastest lap for each manufacturer here. Uh, that is indicative of what's going on with these groups. Fastest Toyota, fastest Ford, fastest Chevrolet. Jamie. 
And Kevin, that was a good observation about Joey Logano and what he's doing here. I just talked to his crew chief, Paul Wolf, and he told me they decided to change the whole setup. We're going to try something new. He said Joey was so happy with this race car, and it felt just like the old model last year. He said, we're going to throw something different at it. If we don't like it, we know exactly what baseline we could go back to for the Daytona 500. And that's why they're successful. Right, they, they're on the pole for the Daytona 500 out there working on their car. Here you see them coming to pit road as hard as they can. Whoa, that's too hard. That's too hard. That will be speeding penalty. Yeah, we'll come back around, serve your penalty, sir. So the but that's why you do that's this. That's why you do it because you got to maximize everything that you can because you have to be able to get on the pit road and lose the least amount of time, get to your pit stall, and you have to know where that tire is going to slide. Now they're diving into pit boxes to see how fast they can get into the pit box without sliding. Now he's going to be pretty gingerly getting that thing back to the pits. It's going to have a massive flat spot on the left front. So not only are they practicing pit road entry and stop, they are using the pit box that they have chosen for Sunday to get an idea and get acclimated to how far they have to come down pit road uh, before pulling in. Yeah, and Joey is at the end of pit road there, so he actually gives up a little bit of time getting up to speed under green because the timing lines will end before he's at maximum speed. You can maximize it getting in, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's it's great under yellow, too. Yep. Kyle Busch caught up in that big crash last night. Now out in front of his Chevrolet pack. He is second fastest among the Chevys, 16th overall. His teammate Austin Dillon, two one hundredths quicker. So David Reagan makes the walk around the garage to Chris Busher's car in which he will take a few laps this afternoon. Again, Chris Busher at home. The Bushers had their second child here. And uh, Chris will be back for the 500. Joey Legato. Too far. <laughs> Locking him up. Too far, too fast. Join Kevin Harvick every Tuesday and Thursday as he gives his opinion on top NASCAR storylines and brings big names in sports and entertainment into the racing world. It's what Kevin Harvick's that? Happy Hour podcast presented by NASCAR on Fox. That's going to be fun. What is that? I'm going to flex my muscle on that show just for you, Clint. You don't think that muscle's there? Not like that. There I is a they, thing. I think they helped you. I think you tipped. What's the guy, last time you've been to the gym? I think you tipped the guy. The weights Work are too on my heavy. bicep. Weights are too heavy. <laughs> well, look at how this is sorted out on our scoring pylon. The Toyotas, as a group, have the fastest laps of this session. The Fords, as a group, there's half a dozen of them next. And then the Chevrolets, as a group, in the draft, are next. Yeah, and some of that's going to depend on positioning and pulling up and whether you were catching another group while your group was formed up. But um, all these all these things are all pre-planned and everything that they're working on is, is pre-planned. And, and like I talked in the beginning of the show, it's it's hey, this this is the item checklist. And sometimes you get in the middle of these practices and this is exactly what you want to do. How, how can I push and. and what can I do to, to be better? And everybody goes back and talks about it and, and everything evolves. This this sport evolves in every way, shape or form while the cars are on the racetrack, off the racetrack. Everything evolves constantly. Got a new toy up here, Kevin. It's a zoom. Well, get ready to use it. I know I was going to show ready. you. Well, look at these. Hood right. up. Look at that, baby. Look at that. Now it's down. You're Come on, late. Artie. It's too. You're too slow. You got to wait for the car. Which car is he in? The, the, the hood flap is going to come up when it gets closer. He's the one controlling right, the camera. I need it to get the ready. car closer. Get ready. Get All ready. right, you ready? I'm I'll tell you when. In. Hold on. Hold on. I'll tell, tell you when. You got to give it a second. In the straightaway, they'll pull up. I saw the whites of his eyes is all I saw. Come on, Chase. Going to have to wait another lap. Can't use it. <laughs> Well, I tried. Save that for a better day. Cool new feature, though. Be able to zoom in parts, pieces. Thinking about pit stops, lug nuts to, a, you know, something coming off a car. I love that. It's going to be cool. And you see Alex Bowman pull out a line. He feels good about 
the way that he was being bumped or didn't like it or whatever the scenario is he's he's identified what he likes or doesn't like about his car and will either fall in behind Kyle Busch or come on the pit road but usually he's got to play his part and be able to keep the number of cars up so you can learn what you need to learn because if you don't have enough cars on the racetrack won't the, the group won't go fast enough to learn what you need to learn same thing in Kyle Busch in front of him you know obviously a backup car there needing all the seat, uh, track time they can get putting them laps in logging them Kyle Busch running a lot of laps because of this uh, being a backup car more so than his, now his children's teammate Austin Dillon ran only 12 laps here's David Reagan practicing Chris Busher's car Jamie yeah doing a little double duty here as you mentioned Chris Busher and his wife welcome their second baby so David did some laps in his car now he just jumped in Chris Busher's car and he told me he was really happy with it overall he just wanted to do a mm. systems check do a few laps but then his team wants him back over there they have more work to do in the 60. David Reagan does a lot of work for Ford he does a lot of the 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 uh, tire testing and, and uh, simulator simulation. work and all the things that come with the wheel force car uh, he does a lot of work for Ford so that's a natural natural fit for him to go out there and do that for Chris well there's Busher. there's quite a tie in, tie in there when Chris Busher came to NASCAR came to North Carolina uh, he stayed with the Reagans for quite a while so they're pretty close. Truex back to the garage the fan zone above the garage you see there loaded with folks awaiting tonight's doubleheader the trucks and Arca tonight on FS1. See Kyle Busch get the back of the nine car a little bump there. I felt like um, or, uh, Kyle Larson sorry. He was the best pusher. I Last agree night. wholeheartedly. We left that those duels. Kevin and I both said, man, that five car sure could push. Jamie? And Brad Kozlowski, you guys have been talking about RFK and David Reagan. So first off, how was the car overall? Did you test everything you wanted to and get a good feel for Sunday? Yeah, Jamie, this is a, a really fast car. We, we've got our kind of our Daytona Talladega package uh, really put together and uh, just want to get racing. You know, I don't want to practice and duels and fall by like, no, I want to go run the Daytona 500 and we're ready to do that. So it's exciting. We're having a great opportunity to win on uh, Sunday, Monday, whatever day. And uh, we're, we're, we're ready to see it through. How about David Reagan as a teammate? This is your team co-owner here to watch him race his way in on qualifying yeah. speed alone. How exciting was that? Yeah, we're glad to have a uh, third car in the race. We hope that pays off at the end. You know, last year we, we led the majority of the race and at the end, there weren't any Fords left. It was just me and my teammate, and we got uh, we got really swallowed up. And so uh, we wanted to have another car. The best way to control your own destiny is to have that strength. And uh, you know, David's a really good racer at these types of racetracks, Jamie. And I think he'll be able to hopefully put us in a better position at the end to close it out. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Brad Keselowski, one of a number of Cup champions in the Daytona 500 this year, still looking for their first win in the 500 that's a pretty big list and you're not going to keep that list out for long these boys are yeah. going to start checking them off is the string of outlier winners of the 500 over looking at that list i would say probably kenny hamlin 194 93 no, those cars are fast, and I can't I can't really speak for what's happening behind any, but to be able to have that small of a group and pull up like that and be able to push and Eric Jones not be dragging the brake or letting off the throttle or anything, he's 100% throttle going as hard as he can. So uh, the, the second and third place car of Christopher Bell here, Denny Hamlin and Christopher Bell, they're, they're able to stay really close and attached in a small group and, and push. So that is that is quite the... So they're going to take off. They're taking off. Yeah. That Denny's car is extremely impressive. Now let's get down to the garage area and join Larry McReynolds. Well, Mike, I'm here with Michael McDowell, qualified on the outside of the front row. Looked pretty racy last night. A little edgy with four to go. What about your car today? Yeah, we're really happy with our uh, Love's RV stops, uh, Dark Horse Mustang. Obviously had a lot of speed in qualifying. Uh, and the car drove pretty well last night, too. I thought we had a shot at maybe uh, winning our duel, but I'm glad that uh, it's in one piece and it gets started on the front row. Been really happy with the speed. The guys have worked really hard, and 
excited about what Sunday could bring. It's probably the fastest car that I've had down here and driving really well. So a lot of things have to go your way, but so far this weekend's been pretty smooth. And um, yeah, everybody at Front Row's done a great job. All right, and Mike, uh, he did do a little work on getting on the pit road, said that was a lot better than last night. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Good thing. Two drivers have not practiced rookie Carson Hosevar in the 77 and Anthony Alfredo in the Beard Motorsports 62. Everybody else has made at least a few laps. Castrola the least with three. Priest Truex Reagan uh, with four. That's Reagan in the 17. Corey LaJoy five. And everybody else has done 10 or more laps in this session. So you've got uh, Joey Logano in a Ford at the back of that pack and as we go on board with Jimmy Johnson and Clint I'm just I'm like you I'm just so amazed how close that these Camrys can can stay to each other see Jimmy lift a little bit probably for what's in front of him and as Bubba closes up behind him but uh, they're able to just push really well and stay really really close in a small group. Now here I see Jimmy working the throttle a little bit. We didn't see that with Eric Jones. See he's given up a little bit. Watch him come to him. See Bubba get to him. And there you go. That's why. And you know I think as as you get further back in that line you have to start checking up a little bit more Clint. And that's why we see that throttle percentage get a little bit less because as you're not the second first second third. Uh, place car it just that accordion starts to stack up and you have to be out of the throttle and start to manage your gap and you know when you're doing it like they are the fourth fifth place car are way too far uh, back and, and that's just going to be a timing thing for Jimmy as he gets used to dragging the brake or using the throttle to, uh, to to manage that gap in front of him but he was using it a lot. But those first three. OK, there's Josevar, Mike. Yep. Taking his first laps of the day. Rookie had an awesome finish. Uh, fourth and fourth or fifth in it. Fourth in his duel. Yeah. I like this kid. Like how he races. Very aggressive. I think he's going to do just fine in this old sport of NASCAR. He's going to do a really good job. There are going to be some mistakes that come along the way, but heck, there's no other way to learn. And he's going to do it on the gas pedal going forward. A little under 10 minutes to go in this practice session as nightfall descends on Daytona. Denny Hamlin descends on Eric Jones bumper. A little over seven minutes to go in today's Daytona 500 practice. First real practice session we've had all week. There will be another one tomorrow 1030 a.m. Weather permitting. Here's a, a look at Ryan Blaney's run over 10 15 and 20 laps uh, quite consistent in this backup car Jamie. Well he had a huge wreck last night but he picked up right where he left off in a backup car nonetheless. So how are you feeling physically and how was this car. Yeah I'm a little sore today but I'm, I'm getting getting over it. Um, yeah I mean last night was unfortunate. I need to apologize for my language on uh, there last night. I apologize for that. I was very frustrated at the time. Uh, but no, I mean, props to the total 12 group. I mean, they, you know, busted their tail last night, this morning, getting this backup car ready. There's a lot you have to do, you know, brand new engine, get the floor on it, you know, interior, all that stuff, wrap it. You know, it's a lot of work. So they did a great job. And, you know, the two and 22 guys, 21 guys helping out too. You know, we're all a big family. So appreciate their help too. But, um, yeah, uh, our car felt really similar to last night, really. I thought, like, no differences. Uh, they, they did a good job of making it very similar, and um, I think our speed is pretty good. It was nice to get in the draft with some other guys and kind of see how I got pushed, and I can push people, and um, you always want to be stable. So that was good to feel. So the Menards Peak Ford Mustangs running well, and looking forward to getting going on race day. Go rest up. We'll see you on Sunday. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Thanks, Jamie. Now, Sunday, during our Fox pre-race for the Daytona 500, uh, Clint sits down with Ryan Blaney talks about his championship year and about the year ahead. Yeah Ryan came up to the ranch. I'm so passionate about what I do. I want to do so well and when things don't go perfect it frustrates me. 
last year I didn't want to race. Bang, can I do this? Like, yeah. can I still compete? Am I good enough to do this job? So anymore? you had some doubt. Oh yeah. I've never been a confident person, ever. Are you gonna continue to just make these same mistakes over and over again, and your career is not gonna change? Or can you try to pinpoint and fix these things? That'll be Sunday. Pre-race starts at 11 a.m. on FS1 and continues at 1 p.m. on Fox. Ryan came up to the ranch and sat down over a bourbon and had a conversation. So cool to be able to, you know, interview him after his championship. Kevin, you and I was teammates with his dad. I love uh, the Blaney family. Um, you know, racing is a family sport, and it's always been that way, watching his kid grow up in a garage area with his sisters and everybody doing it together. It was cool to see him win a championship. And uh, one of the questions that I did ask him was about the way his demeanor is on the radio, on Radioactive every Tuesday versus his interviews. And then all of a sudden, I just heard him apologize for one of those. So I may have, may have enticed him to... To, to have a little bit more of that personality. Yeah. It wasn't my fault. Don't blame me. <laughs> Here's a rookie Carson Hosevar practicing pit road entry. Uh, Larry, why did it take the 77 so long to get on track today? Yeah, Mike, they're scratching their head. Remember, he had a top five finish last night in the dual race. When he went to back out of the garage area for practice, these cars have rack and pinion steering. He had no steering. They eventually just changed the entire rack out. Good to go now. What? And that's that's been a um, you know that's been one of those things that just will pop up with the with the steering and and you don't know what's wrong and you take it off and you just put another one on there. So um, the rack has has definitely been a little bit of an issue here and there with with these cars and and sometimes it just creeps up. And that's a sealed unit, isn't it? The it teams is. can't work on it, can't modify it, can't that's fix right. it. That's right. Pretty good conversation there with Kyle Larson, Jeff Gordon, the man, the myth, the legend. Good boss right there to have on your side to be able to ask questions off of. A lot of experience, a lot of success on this racetrack. He looks about like he did after overtime Sunday, doesn't he? You were right with him. Well, I thought you were talking about Jeff. I, I was, was. Like, are you sure? <laughs> you think they were talking about dinner? Maybe. No, I said <laughs> that look on his face. Uh, they didn't look too happy right here. The Chevrolets need to find some speed. Have you ever talked to either one of those guys? They're always that way. Then they go out and take all your money and your trophy. You never know about that bunch. Well, Jamie is in the midst of them. Well, maybe it's a poker face for Kyle Larson. Boyer was just assessing your body language that maybe you're a little bummed out. I don't know. Where do you stand with the car and what you just found? No, no, I'm not bummed or anything about the car. I just like we make these little pack runs and it's just you can't really learn anything, so uh, that's what I guess I'm bummed about. You know, you hope you go out there and learn something about your car. Um, See, so yeah, I just, I don't know. I just honestly feel like I wasted 50 some minutes of my life right there. Um, but it was good to, good to make some runs down pit road and, and exit pit road, stuff like that. So um, I guess that was good, but the rest of it was like, what am I doing? I love your honesty. I'm always honest. Jamie, Jamie, tell him, tell him his team most likely learned something. Whether he did or not, it doesn't well, matter. Kevin Harvick is saying that your team most likely learned something. So there's that. Yeah, I mean, they'll have some data to look at, I'm sure. So uh, at least you know, we made some hard runs at pit road that we'll get to dissect and see how it compared to last night. Um, stuff like that. So, I mean, there is always something to learn for sure. But uh, I was just hoping that we would have, like, more speed and we could, like, generate more energy and push and all that. But it's like we could never really – none of us didn't, like, have the speed to break the bubble. But I don't really think that means anything either for tomorrow because, like, yesterday I was, like, really, really good at pushing. And I felt like I received push as well. So – but obviously the pack's way bigger and you're too wide and all that. So the energy is way different. Um, than, than it is here when you're trying to be safer and all that. So um, it's just hard to get a true read on things. So that's what makes this practice today. And if we get to practice tomorrow, um, just difficult. So, um, but yeah, I'm sure there's something we can we can learn from it. Thanks, Kyle. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if you guys saw that video. He had an in-car shot. It was actually in his helmet uh, of a lap he ripped around East Bay over there in Tampa. <laughs> wow. I'm talking wide open on the boards. Ended up winning that race that night. He posted it later on on his, uh, I think it was on a Twitter or something. Wide open. Daniel Hemrick, Carson Hosebar among the last cars on track in this final minute of practice. I can imagine if you went around there as fast as he did in that dirt track, little bull ring down there, that this two and a half mile track single file is probably a little bit boring. Well, 
I, I would assume that you're right, and I would uh, I would also agree with you that you and I are only going to imagine how fast we <laughs> drive a dirt, a dirt car around the track that fast like Kyle Larson. I'm not. Uh, no I'm not way. either. Now, Austin Dillon is the quickest Chevrolet in this session, but he got that quick lap by tagging on to a pack of Toyotas. Uh, put him to 15th overall and the fastest Chevrolet. And it picked him up three tenths of a second faster than when he was running with the other Camaros. Hey, if you can't beat him, join him. Well, sometimes that's what you have to do. 100%. Just try to bury yourself in the middle of the fastest group. Can't beat him, leave him. He's not leaving them. No. Join them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Denny Hamlin wins practice. We'll be right back. Cup Series practice was paced by all of the Toyotas, save Martin Truex. Michael McDowell was the fastest Ford, ninth overall. Fastest Chevrolet was Austin Dillon back in 15th. Everybody but Anthony Alfredo took laps in this practice session. Jamie? Well, what a difference a day makes for Jimmy Johnson last night. I don't think I've ever interviewed you as nervous as you were. What's the emotion today knowing you're locked in, you can focus on your race car now? I slept well last night, so I'm, I'm uh, well rested and feel really good about our Carvana Toyota. And you know, the guys had to do a lot more work to the car than we realized. My trip across the apron damaged the whole underside of the car, and that's where all the downforce and balance is created these days. And so they basically took from the front fenders off and everything below it. It spent uh, last night and all day today getting it right and going through the scanning devices quite a few times to make sure the car was back to its original settings, and I couldn't tell they changed a thing. Car drove great. Hall of Famer Jimmy Johnson will start in the Daytona 500 for the 21st time in his career, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Race day coming up next to get you ready for the Craftsman Truck Series race and a surprise doubleheader tonight. NASCAR has moved the Sioux Chief Fast Track 200 ARCA race up to tonight right after the truck so get ready for a great racing double header from daytona and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning at 10:30 with cup series final practice